speaking of things that need translating, this uh, amazing, amazing person does not need any translation whatsoever. None whatsoever. And and it's such an honor for me to be able to, to have her in, to have them in studio. Author, activist, yoga instruction, just all-round wellness practitioner. Beauty Boys, welcome to 99FM. Thank you so much for having me. Like you're oh just, my you're, goodness. you're beaming with health. Can you stop? <laughs> We're in covert. <laughs> How? I need you to, to wake me up every morning with yeah. that intro, honestly. <laughs> wow. So, so how have you been uh, keeping abreast of things uh, under these uh, very perilous times that we're finding ourselves in? Wow, I've just really been indulging, really mm -hmm. indulging in self-care mm -hmm. and um, just, you know, the soft life. <laughs> Engaging <laughs> deeply in the soft life, very much. And, um, you know, allowing myself to fall apart when I need to as oh, well. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the hard part. I think so, yeah. We always feel as if we have to keep it together and, mm -hmm. oh, not even keep it together, snap out of it. Yes. Snap, just yes, snap out exactly. of it. Yes, exactly. There's always, like, this pressure or expectation to, like, bounce back yeah. or to be okay and yeah. to hold it together. And I I think, like, that's, like, also, like, a form of... Um, it's like an illness in itself. Okay. You know what I mean? I think it's a form of dysfunction. So yeah. I just, like, I just allow myself. When yeah. I want to cry and I want to break down, I do it. And when I'm yeah. going through it, I allow myself to go through it, you know? Indeed. Who is beauty to beauty? Because people have, like, different perceptions of you. But who are you to you? That is... I think that's such a very difficult question to answer because, yeah. um, I mean, just before we, we came on, you know, I was talking about how I'm constantly changing, like, yeah. <laughs> my social media yeah. handles. And I, and I think it's reflective of, like, yeah. my dynamic personality because yeah. every day I find, like... A new part of myself mm -hmm. every day I I learn something new mm -hmm. or I unlearn something that mm -hmm. was like old destructive toxic or something that just doesn't serve me anymore and mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to constantly like shed the old skin or the old way of being and like step into like a different and new version of me and to also explore mm -hmm. and adventure into like different avenues of like what I like and mm -hmm. what I don't like yeah. and um, you know just to experience different yeah. things as well so it's, it's very difficult for me to like really sit and like define myself because I'm constantly changing. I'm constantly changing. I guess that's who I am. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Because as human beings, we're forever evolving. And be not even evolving, just becoming. Right. Because sometimes we need to regress to our truest form mm -hmm. prior to all of the noise mm -hmm. seeped in and told us who we were. Absolutely. You know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. You... I think you should consider motivational <laughs> speaking. Honestly, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I love your poetry. And now Miguel must get author. What made you fall in love with words? When did that uh, begin? Um, so, I mean, I think it was really easy for me to mm -hmm. fall in love with words and books yeah. and stories because yeah. I grew up in a house full of stories. My dad grew up with really old people mm -hmm. who loved to tell stories mm -hmm. around the fire. Yeah. So naturally, you know, bedtime was a time where my dad would like, fill my mind with these elaborate mythological yeah. stories yeah. Um, from the Damara and Nama um, tradition. Yeah. And my mom was working um, for the educational library services at the time. Yeah. So whenever I would go visit her offices, like after school mm -hmm. and those things, I would, you know, there would just be books All everywhere. The there would be books everywhere. Birthday presents were books. My mom was like a big... Um, what is it, reading advocate. Yeah. She was very passionate about reading and she understood the importance of books and yeah. um, unlocking different worlds through stories. And so every birthday present, Christmas present, our presents were, were books. Yeah. And we, we just fell in love with them, my sisters and I. Actually, let me not speak for other people. <laughs> Let me not speak for others. Speak for yourself. Let me speak for mm. myself. Before the things come. Uh -huh. Later at the family meeting, people are adding me. <laughs> no, but you I know. I really, really fell in love with, with books mm. and stories. And I think it was really an easy romance. Yeah. You know, I think it was set up. It's like, you know, like how pa some parents, like they have, like uh, they arrange marriages. Yes. My parents arrange books <laughs> and stories yes. and yes. words. So it was very, very easy for yeah. me. You know, it was very, very easy for me. And I'm, I think it's also like a way that I used to kind of bond with my parents as well. Mm -hmm. So bonding time with my dad would entail him like telling us these beautiful stories. Yeah. Bonding time with my mom would be her tucking us in at night mm -hmm. and like reading um, 
the magic faraway tree or yeah. like Roald Dahl yeah. and all of these beautiful books to us. Um, and so it just ki- it just came naturally. It's beautiful because I, I totally do agree that um, reading is a culture reading is a reading culture because it's ingrained in you mm-hmm. you know and, and it's such a beauty when you when it gets handed down to right. us from our parents because i think for me i remember the first magazine that made me go Whoa, how about <laughs> drum, <laughs> drum magazine and then from drum magazine like you know books coming in and out my mm-hmm. my my mother is the one that made me fall in love with tony morrison um you know you know you get you get obsessed with, with james baldwin because it was that era oh, in south africa yes. by like yeah, I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> <laughs> and then I found my own, uh, you know, um, authors that I fell in love with, like Ta uh, Nahisi and, and the like. Which authors or which books resonate with you? Gosh, you know, I think for me, I, I'm I'm hearing you speak about the books and the authors that you kind of grew up yeah. on, and I'm I'm just sit, so I'm sitting here and I'm so envious yeah. because I didn't I I had it a little bit from my dad, but mm-hmm. at the time I didn't really get it. He he was really like about like you know Pan Africanist yes. writers yes. and that type of thing, but yes. at the time it was like it was um, mostly predominantly he was trying to push um, nonfiction, mm-hmm. and I was like. No, yeah, I want to, yeah. I want to, like, giants yeah, and yeah. magical worlds yeah. and things like that. And at the time, um, I, I really just fell into, like, you know, Euros, the Eurocentric type, mm. like, books and authors and that type of thing. So as a child, my favorite author was Rodal because okay. he wrote many children's books. Yeah. Now that I'm, or, or when I became older and I started, like, you know, having, like, my own taste for things and kind of also, like, unlearning mm. that type of thing, I fell in love with Bell Hooks. Um, okay. I fell in love with um, Akua Naru. Uh, <laughs> I fell in love with... Gosh, I mean, I went through a, a stage where I only read Paulo Coelho. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the one time I went to a bookstore, um, Orumbonde Books. It's a second-hand bookstore. Yeah, yeah like Uncle Spikes. Oh, oh, yes. He's my uncle, right, by the way. Right. <laughs> and so the, the uncle there is like, no. Yeah. Um, we have you only of, come by Paul your books, books yeah. read something else and then I read Sophie's World which is like yeah. about philosophy and yes. existentialism and those yes. beautiful things and I was like oh my gosh oh, yes, oh, I like this and then not, like Toni Morrison yeah, yeah. and um gosh you know I like I would I would say a certain feminist writer's name but like we we have I have cancelled her anyways oh, because gosh. she's transphobic. Mm. I think we all know who I'm talking about. But Akweke Mezi, mm. those people, those people are writing yeah. like Bernadine Evaristo. Mm. They are writing. I like it. I like um, Profum La Cola's very, work. very aggressive in the style for me. I like because it's in your it's in your face. Radical. Like you, you, you cannot just tilt your head and look away. I love you it. can't. I love it. Doctor Klaleng, mm. like. Oh my How? goodness. How? I love the books. Yeah. I love the writing. Yeah. And I've like also like learned to love nonfiction. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now I'm like into nonfiction. Okay. Yes. And like I think I think my dad would be really proud. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about your book. You know, you're someone else's <gasps> I love someone's gonna say that. I love I love beauty boys, <laughs> man. I love Yeah what? I love oh, 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 Tamgu's escape theory. My dear. Yeah. The theory thereof. Like, Talk to us about the, the premise of the book. Um, so the book is basically about Namku, who mm. is the protagonist. Mm. And it's a coming of age story. So mm. you watch Namku progress from like, you know, like uh, matric okay. into like university. Yeah. So it's all these different like life changing experiences, plus like trauma. Mm. And she's like grappling with mental illness. Oof. And then, like, the development of, like, a friendship between two, two young women, um, between Namko and her best friend, yeah. Sophia, and then the dynamics of her, like, hyper-religious boyfriend, Tangeni, mm. and then, like... I know you threw the whole Namibia in them. Like, everybody is there. <laughs> everybody is there. Namko, <laughs> Kwenwandia, Sophia, Tangeni. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Where's Simata? Where's Simata? Where's Simata? Uh, in the next one, oh, Thank you. The next one, I must holler for, like, character names, yes. background <laughs> stories, you know? <laughs> also, there's a busy region. Also, us. Yes, yes, it's that. true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. It's true. It's beautiful, though. Yeah. The, the, the writing journey. 
how traumatic was it? Like how, uh, how, well, how let, yeah. maybe, let me not put a label on it, but maybe for you it wasn't traumatic. Maybe it was just yeah. a, <laughs> pages flowing. <laughs> you were not having like a, a, a mental break. You know, there's, there's when you're in chapter yeah. one, but you're still crying and you need yeah. to get to chapter 12. And you're like, I have, <laughs> I just get. But what was that? How was that? I won't lie. Yeah. My writing process was beautiful. Yeah. It was so smooth. It was the wine I'm glass. About to, I'm, a, I'm about to cut this, this interview short. <laughs> okay. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. There's also a little bit of dirt. Okay. There's also a little bit of shade. Don't worry. I'm getting there. But like it was beautiful. Mm. You know, it was like the Merlot. Mm. The beautiful pens. Hey, now. You know, the setting was there. Hey. You know, it was how I am. The hey. cheek. I'm hey. Out. You know, yeah, come on, deep in writing mode, deep in creative, creativity yeah, mode. Yeah. Nobody disturb me. I'm writing. Yeah. That time I was still living in my parents' house. I'm That's writing. The best. Nobody disturb me. I wasn't paying rent. Yes. So things could flow. I wasn't having exactly. to worry about the those stress. Things. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then, like, when it gets real. Mm. <laughs> Um, because, okay, first I want to say about my writing process is that I feel like it's a very deeply spiritual process. Okay. For me, my creative process yeah. is a very deeply spiritual process. And it's almost like a channel or a realm or a portal or something opens up and then the ideas Flowing. and the characters and the stories just flow in. Yeah. Right. So for me, it's a very beautiful experience. I love mm-hmm. writing. I could write all day and all night. Yeah. The process that was excruciating and traumatic for me mm-hmm. was now after I secured a uh, publisher, mm-hmm. aka Unam Press. When now? And obviously it was like, oh my goodness, because my dad was just like, I told my dad, like, I finished my manuscript, mm-hmm. and my dad is like, okay, cool, what are you going to do with it? So I'm like, I don't really know. So he's like, send it to Unam Press. So okay. I'm like, no, but they're like an academic publisher. Mm-hmm. And my dad is like, hey, you have nothing to lose. So I'm like, okay, cool. Sent them like the first three chapters, I think, at the time. Or, yeah, I think it's the first three chapters with the proposal and stuff. Everything is on their website, guys. Get on it. Flood Unam Press with your manuscripts. Get mm-hmm. on it. Everything is on their website. Mm-hmm. The, um, how you like submit, all okay. of those things. Okay. So then, after they read the first three chapters, they were like, yo, send us the whole thing. And okay. then the trauma began. began. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Editing. Editing. Come on now. I'm a writer. I'm not. Come a, on now. I'm not an editor. No, I'm I, not. I'm not, I don't even have great grammar. Mm. Even my spelling is questionable, guys. Mars. But like, I, I, Unam Press has an amazing um, editing team. Okay. Unam Press also has like, or reached out to amazing reviewers. Okay. For the book, mm-hmm. so I got a lot of like Support. constructive, supportive feedback mm. in my in my in, in in the stages of like developing the story mm. also and making it what it is because like I won't lie I had plot holes mm. I had plot holes yeah. you know there were plot holes there were lots of like errors and stuff like that and so I think and things. yeah so I think in the beginning I I felt like a little bit of a way because mm-hmm. there was like all this like criticism you know on the work mm. but when I actually started um, engaging in the editing and rewriting process and taking their suggestions and their notes and all of those things, I realized how how full the story became. Yeah. You know? How complete and whole yeah. those edits and that constructive criticism and support made the story. And that's, that's so the beautiful. importance of like having a good publisher with a great Well, come on now, you Nam. Hey! Yes, hey. Unam Press did the thing. Hey. So where can, we, where can we get the book? The book can be purchased from Book Den mm-hmm. and Unam Press, the publisher. Mm-hmm. So Unam Press is on main campus, mm-hmm. just across like uh, DH, so, yeah, the dining hall. Mm-hmm. Um, and Unam Press and Book Den Korea as well. Oh, so if you're okay. outside of Ventuk, you can, you can yeah, you yeah, call yeah. them, put in your order. I think you can do like an EFT yeah. and then your book will be on its way to yeah. you. And then internationally, it's available from Africa um, Books Collective. Okay. A- or ABC Books. You can go onto their website, find Lamku's Escape Theory, and put your order in. And yeah. I think it takes like a week. I know somebody in the States who ordered it last week and mm-hmm. they got it yesterday. Oh. So, yeah, because they, um, Africa Books Collective is an international book distributor okay. um, specifically to like African published books. Beautiful. Yes. That's so sad. We are, we, really, we are really getting the support, Moss. Moss. Yes. Mm-hmm. You see Unem Press. You see the yeah. things Unem Press does. And finally, this journey thus far what has it taught you about yourself three things hmm that i am 
the them that I think I am. Moth. Yes. I think that a lot of creatives, we struggle with, um, what is that thing called? Imposter syndrome. Yes. Girl. Imposter sy syndrome. It's Preach. teaching me still, actually, how to overcome imposter syndrome. And that is just by realizing that I am worthy mm -hmm. and I am deserving mm -hmm. of having my work out there, mm -hmm. of, of being a published author. Mm -hmm. um, and of having my story out there, mm -hmm. our story. Mm -hmm. This is a Namibian story. It is, Pella. Yes. yes. So I'm overcoming, I'm learning how to overcome imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, it also taught me <laughs> grammar, <laughs> punctuation, <laughs> English, English, honey, English. The, qu the Queen's. The, the English. Queen's English. Yeah, I was <laughs> yeah, was um, And then also, I think really just writing from a Namibian perspective mm. because I didn't grow up reading a lot of Namibian books and there aren't also very many Namibian True. books out there. True. So telling, yeah, I learned how to tell Namibian the stories, stories. Yeah. you know, yeah. with you as she strolled down Independence Avenue, Avenue. <laughs> and the taxi <laughs> pulled over at the wrong side of the road. <laughs> you know what I mean? She hopped in and he sped off to Kapana. Move. Single quarters. Move. <laughs> yes. C65. Oh, maybe that's a real taxi, but... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it, it's beautiful for us to see ourselves in the stories. Mm. So, oh, man. I, I just... I'm so grateful for you being here, but more so I'm grateful for you sharing yourself because that's what creatives do they share themselves and, and and being that vulnerable babe that's so brave like legit mm. that's that's bravery in yeah. and of itself especially so. with imposter syndrome just like it's lurking scary. sitting on your shoulder <laughs> oh and then when I, exactly uh, 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 <laughs> so thank you thank you for 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 this gift that you've given us a gift of you um and a gift of usness to the world because that's what a book is Look, look, look at us. Yes. We're, also, we're also here. This you is know? what we and do it's, in and, and, and it's timeless. It's, yes. it's timeless. The timelessness of it. Thank you, my love. And uh, next time, mm. love, don't take so long to come back. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. But you guys must also invite a person. Who's you know, a th and that was me with him. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you get at it this way, uh -huh. we have to cut the interview. Sorry, my dear. Sorry. <laughs> Since we're throwing shade, most, we also invite most, a no, person. No. Most small, definitely. Small. Most definitely. So that's uh, Kamgu's escape theory. Book Den and Unam Press. Absolutely. All right, then. 99 FM loves Oshakati, Ondangwa, and Ongwe Diva on 104.5 FM.